Welcome to the ninth video on CSS layouts. In this video, we're going to add the footer section. And as you probably know, that always is at the end of the web page. So let's open up the web page we've been working on here. So we're going to stick it at the bottom here. And what we want to do is match the color that we used for our nav bar and our header. And then you'll notice this theme where we went light on the content panels and darker on the top and bottom sections. Because you always want the content to be light in terms of the background, but dark in terms of the text because that makes it readable. So let's add our footer. Now, of course, as I said, we want the footer to be the last element rendered. So we're going to put it below our main content panes. No matter how many main and sidebar content panes that you add, you always want the footer at the very bottom because remember, HTML goes in a top-down order. So we want this rendered dead last. So again, this will be at the very bottom. And I'll go ahead and copy and paste. And here you can see we've got our new div section. Now we're going to switch back to IDs away from classes because we're not going to reuse this. We're only going to have one footer so we can go back to IDs. And we'll use a relevant name called footer. And so let's go ahead and create the CSS. And I'll just copy and paste this in here. And here you can see we've got our footer CSS code. And again, we're going to use the same background color that we used in our header and in our nav bar. We'll keep the margins, of course, at 10 pixels. Now, in future videos, we're going to add more rules to this. But for now, we'll just stick to this rule set. But we will give it a height for now. Let's just stick with uh, 60 pixels. We may change that later on. But for now, let's just get something in there so it's rendered. And we'll save this. We'll save our index.html. Let's open this up. And there you can see we've got our footer. Now, you might be wondering why our sidebar is going over the top of our footer. So remember, a floated element is not in the CSS flow, so it'll just go right over our footer. And we can prevent that. So we have to use, believe it or not, the clear property again to prevent that. And so that serves a couple of different purposes. So let's go ahead and put that in here. Let's actually set this to both. And we'll save this. Let's open this up. And now you can see our image sidebar respects the border of our footer. Now, you could have set this to right, but actually both will actually protect and any other elements that are in the flow from elements that are floated either left or right. So if you decide in the future to add some columns on the left, this will protect the footer on both sides. So basically, as I said, the clear property has a couple different functions that you can use it for. Now we're protecting the footer from all these sidebars that are in the float and are not part of the flow. And so now the footer will not be trampled over. So let's save everything up again. And we'll open up our web page. And this is really starting to come together now. We've got a nice layout. Now, you can add as many different content panes now as you want. You could add another main content pane here. You could add another sidebar. But as I said, you always want the footer on the bottom. Now, what we're going to do over the next several videos is fill in these three sections. So we're going to fill in the header. We're going to fill in the nav bar, and then we're going to fill in the footer. So I'll give you some ideas on how you can fill these sections in. Oh, you know what? I almost forgot we need a border radius here. There's always something, right? So let's close this out, and we'll just copy and paste that right into our footer rule set. We'll save this again. Save everything up. And there you go. We've got our border radius. Okay, I will see you guys in the next video.